We have a Cancer full moon this week on the 26th, and this last week of the year could be very, very volatile. So the Cancer full moon is opposed is in the summer solstice degree, close to it, and it is opposing the winter solstice degree, which we just had on the winter solstice on the 21st. So this is a very big opposition. So stay tuned and I'll explain what all that means as well as why I see this last week of the year as potentially having a lot of volatility. Hi, my name is Aura. I am the crypto astrologer and over here <laughs> and welcome. Merry Christmas. Happy, happy holidays, uh, Festivus to the rest of us. If you're a Seinfeld fan and you remember that. So uh, I'll give you a heads up on what's going on this week, especially uh, with some volatility probably in crypto and stocks coming up this week. But we have a lot going on in the news. Oh my God, the beginning of January is going to be crazy. Legally, very, very crazy. That is definitely coming. We already have some uh, deadlines going on in the first half of January, right? Deadlines with um, the, uh, the ETFs, the ETF decision on Bitcoin, Bitcoin ETFs. Deadlines on the Julian Assange case and cases connected to the Julian Assange case. There's just a lot going on that's very, very legally uh, focused um, in the first half of January. And these are going to create some very big dramas and some big unfoldings. Also, stay tuned. Make sure you uh, subscribe because I will be doing my 2024 predictions video in a couple of days. And this next year is going to be crazy like you've never seen before. We're going through a lot. Some of this is actually pure science with like this new particle that has entered our atmosphere in the last, I don't know, month or something. So there is literally a change to the vibrational energy field, to the auric field of the planet, to the light that is coming onto the planet. This is the shift to the 5D that many people make a lot about. Um, I don't talk so much about it here, but I will touch on it. So there's a lot going on. Get ready because the foundations are getting ready to be rocked. So what's going on this week? So let's start with this full moon, the full moon in Cancer, which is on the 26th. So Cancer is the most uh, emotional sign, right? And the, um, the summer solstice degree, of course, this is not the summer solstice, unless, of course, you're in Australia, in which case it's opposite, but in the, you know, the Eastern Hemisphere, but in general, I'm speaking for the Western Hemisphere. So the Cancer degree would be the hottest degree of the year, the day of the longest day of the year, the summer, right? And then the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year, the day of the longest night or the shortest day. And these are opposites and they are extremes of emotions, extremes of coldness versus emotion and they are uh, logic versus intuition and uh, you sort of like depth emotional depth versus shallowness. So there's this really extreme polar opposition that's going on and is reaching some kind of a peak this week. So on the full moon. So what does this mean? It means that we are in for a big shakeup, things going uh, in a different direction than people maybe expect, than the usual, than the uh, historical, than that which has been the pattern we've been used to, okay? So there will be some pattern interruptions and that can mean a very big uh, disruption here in the last week of the year in a lot of things, um, even moving into next year, right? Not just this week, but um, let's take a dive into quickly the Bitcoin chart and I can give you a heads up on what I see as possible there. Okay, so here we go. This is uh, basically the extension of the chart I drew last week where I showed the potential for us to shoot up out of that pattern, but it didn't. We've really just made a sideways pattern, which of course crypto does all the time. We're just continuing to move sideways. So what I'm seeing is the likelihood that we get both because we do have some conflicting astrology coming up that is going to give us a couple of different targets. Of course, those targets are inside the members area and you can check that out if you want to become a member. Often my targets are sitting there for quite a while before we get those moves, but usually they do happen. So, I mean, nobody's perfect and nobody can see everything that's coming, but I pretty much have a really good track record here. So the, um, the movements are going to go in both directions and it's up to you which 
place you want to capture. I do not trade day-to-day -day moves. I do not trade the small moves on crypto. I do the swing trades, right? And those are the levels that I've been really good at calling for people, especially being able to give people time windows when we can get to the peaks and when we're gonna get either a flash crash or the deeper lows. So that's in my members area. And also, you know, discussions on silver and gold and what's going on with the precious metals, which everyone wanted to break out before the end of the year. I thought they would do a little bit. They did a little bit, not much. I mean, gold broke its all time high, but hasn't really broken out yet. Okay. Those moves will come, but they're not going to really happen until next year. Obviously this last week, probably not going to give us the biggest push in those metals. Although we could get something here at the end, but as we go into next year, there's some big, big changes happening. Like I said, big energetic changes, uh, major transformations of everything in 2024. It's a very big year. So here we go, this week's chart. So that full moon in Cancer, like I said, sitting in the 12th house, bringing up some pretty weird dreams, psychic, intuitive, knowing, um, maybe just avoiding a uh, negative, or if you're trusting your intuition, if you're really listening to your intuition, you will be able to get a sense of things that are not quite right, you know, and there can be some pretty intense dreams going on. Uh, with the sun over there in the sixth house, it's like just going about things in the normal, uh, unquestioned way is probably going to just keep you in some sort of a hypnosis or like a dream state. So it's better to kind of question everything a little bit this week. You could get some big insights as to kind of what you've been doing habitually without realizing. Um, there's an opportunity here with the energy of the week to break through that and break free that, especially with Mars there on the cusp of the sixth house kind of giving us some energy, asking us to change our routines a little bit, maybe pick up some new health habits, things like that. As Mercury joins up with the Mars retrograde, I mean, with the Mercury retrograde joins up with Mars, as Mars moves into the sixth house and Mercury backs into the fifth, there could be some uh, flare-ups of, of anger and short tempers here over the holidays. So keep it, uh, calm as much as you can, especially related to children or even creative projects or um, habits. You know, people like, you're in my way, you know, that sort of thing. So um, it can be a little testy here, but that's going to be very short lived. And then um, we move on to some very uh, different energies as we are thinking a lot about children and creative projects. In fact, this full moon is an incredible time to start tapping into your creativity. Do something creative. Sit down. I mean, we've been doing that. We've been sitting and drawing things at the kitchen table, you know, uh, figuring out like some creative expression. Maybe you do some karaoke at home or whatever, just something to, to release that creative, release the creative kraken, let it out and uh, express yourself. That's going to be very, very healing uh, on a lot of levels. And also, hey, it's just fun. So we also have the um, the sun up here opposing the moon, which I talked about as the full moon energy and Pluto right there on the seventh house cusp. Oh my God. That's like, that's some big transformation, some big changes in, um, like I said, legalities coming up in the next few weeks, but this is sort of the seed of it. So Pluto is like the law of karma. Pluto's really intense and brings back what we've put out in our relationships. So it's really uh, re bringing back rewards or punishments, depending on which side of that scale you fall on. So this Pluto cycle uh, on the cusp of the seventh house is making some major, major changes and transformations in relationships. Some of these can be abrupt and even explosive because, you know, Pluto's basically the volcanic activity of the zodiac. And usually we're not that interested in volcanic activity in our relationships, you know, passion, yes, but volcanoes, no, because those are quite destructive and dangerous. So this can certainly bring back any energy uh, of that nature and put it back in the lap of the person where it belongs. So there's some heavy duty karma coming in the legal area. Like I said, early January, some legal fireworks, like you would not believe there is a judgment. There's a call of judgment. And this is going to come down very heavy on certain people, right? People who actually deserve it. So this is actually some form of justice coming forward, which is very you know, exciting and sort of happy for those of us who've been waiting to see justice happen. Um, 
Venus will be moving into a trine uh, with Saturn and and the moon, the full moon energy over the next week. So that's going to bring us, those of us who are balanced and emotionally responsible, mature, handling our stuff, being patient, handle, you know, just basically dealing with ourselves in a mature way uh, are going to get some big uh, rewards. We're going to get some affection, some appreciation, maybe even some money. There's some good things coming to us here uh, just by doing things the right way. And that's, again, echoing that Pluto energy on the seventh house cusp. So there may be some financial rewards available here also. And then um, Venus is also trining Neptune early in the week. And then, of course, Mercury and uh, Mars are making a square to Neptune. So this is endings. Some people are having endings and other people are having new beginnings. So this is kind of out of the hall, you know, one door closes, another door opens kind of feeling, um, well, kind of all at once as this year uh, closes out. So we, we might have some very dramatic things happening over this next seven day period of time in the news, in the world, in your personal lives. There's just a lot of very conflicting energy taking place planetarily. And then uh, we have Chiron up there in the, on the midheaven or close to the midheaven in the 10th house, uh, talking about our soul family and really questioning who belongs there, who really belongs in our soul family, getting closer to those people and maybe taking a little distance when that doesn't work out so well for you. So the North node up there in the 10th house is bringing us, uh, ideas of structure, discipline, hard work, and, um, ambition and as our soul's purpose, what is our life ambition? What do we really feel we are meant to do? And the soul family that is going to help us get there. That is what that Chiron is telling us that those people are coming into our world or coming into our environment to help us get there. And there's going to be some support here in this next year in ways that haven't been there previously. So that's pretty exciting. Um, also, uh, the sun trines Jupiter very early this week, which is you know, people just tend to look good. <laughs> There's kind of a, a blessing and a, a generosity and uh, some sort of philosophical uh, enlightenment available as well there, especially we look good in our career. Like those of us who are, you know, doing the right thing can get some sort of uh, benefit, boost, uh, good for publishing, good for you know, videos or doing anything out into the world, into the public and getting truth and wisdom out there into the public or uh, to other people that you know and care about. So this is a real blessing, sort of philosophical uh, opening and also really good for uh, alliances with people abroad or from different backgrounds than you, people with uh, a different kind of, you know, cultural background. And then we have, like I said, Uranus over there. Uranus, well, I actually didn't talk about Uranus yet. Uranus is still retrograde, still in Taurus, sitting in the 11th house, kind of peeking out there, talking about what our mission is on the bigger picture and how do we, you know, a lot of these things, I would see this as really descriptive of what's going on with Elon Musk and being at him being attacked by the... EU, how they're going after him, how, of course, the advertisers are going after him. This is like a public stand and doing things and taking a stand and being stubborn, digging your feet in, which is what Elon Musk is doing. He's saying, you will not control me. You will not tell me what to do or how to do it. And this is in the benefit to the benefit of free speech, but it's a, it's technology, which is Uranus for humanity. And there's a security element involved, the money element. That's where the battle is uh, against him, right? The advertisers are trying to uh, manipulate him with advertising money to get him to behave as they want. And they're going after him in every way possible. But I really feel he is going to, on some level, be triumphant. Because as he said in his interview, humanity will know that the advertisers destroyed X for being a free speech platform. And that's true. Humanity will um, really look at the advertisers and really look at these companies. And there will come a point, and this is happening more and more over this next 12 months, there's going to be a lot of people standing on principle related to um, technology. And this is also that legality stuff. These are those lawsuits. It's going to be very, very big all through 2024, a lot related to lawsuits, but also very many, very unpredictable, unexpected, strange, unexplainable events are going to be happening. 
The weird, the bizarre, the unexpected, the sudden, the rug pull, the strangeness, the aliens, the uh, just the craziness is going to get off the chart in this next year. You're going to see a lot of really weird stuff happening. And some of it will happen through the legal system. Some of it will happen through disclosures coming from the government. Some of it is a lot of stuff coming through the legal system that will dig up some very, very deep, dark secrets. A lot of stuff that the alternative media people already know about. But what is going to do it, the mechanisms by which that's going to happen, will have a lot to do with individuals individual violations, individual ways that laws have been broken against certain people, just sort of random people out there in the world where they were maybe subjects of experiments, things like this. And maybe they were being uh, manipulated by whole cabals of people, just individuals who are like maybe like experimental. And so this case the Julian Assange, the one that is attached to the, the people who came to interview with Julian Assange and who they were illegally uh, traced. I mean, the, the court, the judge is hearing whether it was illegal or not by the CIA, I believe it was the CIA, by, by their proxies in the UK, these people working on behalf of the CIA to uh, spy on the uh press people who came to interview Julian Assange and everything about them was being tracked and spied on after that and during that. And this is what the judge is ruling on. And I will talk about that in this 2024 video that I have coming out. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you share this because this is a key, key thing. And it is not just about Julian Assange. It's about certain random individuals that nobody even consider, you know, no one would have thought, you know, nobody has, you don't know who these people are in your world or in your environment, or you might have gone to school with them or whatever, but these people were subjects of certain experimental things. And of course, this is all tied in with all these government secret dealings with entities that are off world, entities that are buried beneath the ground, things that are going on that we're not supposed to know about. And there's great deep, dark, caverns of information that is going to be revealed. And it's going to happen like this. It's going to come through these weird individual stories, a lot of like court cases busting this stuff open. So get ready for the weird, the weird and the wacky and tap into your intuition, right? Tune into your intuition. That's going to help you a lot this week, but make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that like button and please share this. I'm sure someone out there would like to get that information. And for some reason, YouTube does everything they can to stop my information for getting out there. So <laughs> I could use your help. Thanks a lot. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.